So I could give you every single title that Christina has, but as you dive deeper into this episode, I promise you will see why she is a true philanthropist, but why she also, as of September, started another company called I'm Too Busy, because simply put, she is too busy. But we really talked about a lot of things from the celebrity makeup artist side of things and how really growing up her mom keeping the house aesthetically pleasing really propelled her into the makeup industry. But on top of that, we talked obviously about a lot of the different brands, a lot of the different clients that she was been able to work with. One particularly who is my favorite chef ever. And she was even able to give me a deeper dive into one of her personal interactions with him and it truly made me laugh and my heart smile but on top of that she really talked about what the future outlook will bring and really if she could put that into two words bring it there's not anything that she doesn't want to explore there's not anyone that she doesn't want to work with because for her it is definitely far from it being about the money but rather about it being amazing experiences from start to finish because she even gave me the timeline as to how it can be with contracts and getting paid and working with different clients and why she really has to revert back to that what did i say i'm too busy so without further ado enjoy episode 167 eyes don't lie Welcome, buddy. Welcome, everybody, back to another episode of the Down to Business podcast here with Tamar Turner. I feel like a lot of my more recent episodes have been all inclusive, have been, you know, we've talked a little bit about everything for everyone. And while this episode can still follow that format, I'm, I'm really just calling out my ladies right now. I'm really calling out all my ladies, whether I've talked to you on the podcast, whether you've listened to the podcast, family, friends, newcomers, everything of the sort, I need y'all not only to just open your ears, but just pay attention to this episode for me. Just let's give Christina our time, our listening ear, and I promise you, you won't regret it. So Christina is joining us today on the Down to Business podcast. I'm going to let her get into everything that she does. I will not spoil anything. The only thing I'll ask her before we get started is, Christina, how are you doing today? How's everything on your end? I am wonderful. How are you today? Thanks for having me. No complaints. No complaints. So as I was telling her before I started, I'm going to still give her a shout out in the interview. Christina has an amazing aesthetic behind her. I love backgrounds. I love lights. I love all of that. She's bringing it all together today. But nonetheless, very excited for her to tell y'all why we're here today. Very excited for her to tell y'all about what she does, how she's been able to amass so much success, really give y'all a deeper dive into who she is, how she's been able to build her brand, who she's been able to service because she serves some of my favorites out there, y'all. I was going through the list beforehand, and I was, my jaw just kept dropping lower and lower with each name. I'm very excited to be talking to her. So one, Christina, look, I know we're going to have some people from your side. I know we're going to have some people from my side, and I know we're going to have some newcomers along the way trying to find out more about the both of us. So to give everybody an even playing field, to put everyone on the same page, can you, one, just tell us a little bit about yourself, and then can you, two, just tell us what brings you on the Down to Business podcast today? Okay. So yes, my name is Christina Flack. I am a celebrity makeup artist. I am also the creator and CEO of Pretty Girl Makeup. And I'm also uh, starting a new company called I'm Too Busy Skincare and Cosmetics, which is coming out hopefully soon. <laughs> but uh, so yes, I'm a philanthropist. I am a mother of five. I am the beauty expert on California Live on NBC. Um, let's see, what else am I? I think that's it. Got to give all the titles the respect that they deserve. Most yes, definitely. I absolutely. love it. Right. I really want to start at the beginning of this journey. I really want to start where, where did the love, the interest, the fascination, the passion for makeup, for beauty, where did that really all start? Was it a specific event? Were you just playing around one day? Where did you really get your start into all of that? I think my mother really just had our, she, she was kind of an artist as well. She was a photographer and a designer and our home was always aesthetically beautiful. Um, you know, I didn't grow up with a ton of money, but my mom always had our house just elegant and pretty. So I had a, a it, it pleased my eye. And so as I was growing up, I was kind of a tomboy, but kind of a girly girl. So I played around with makeup on my cousins and my friends. And then I started doing, you know, weddings and different people. And my mom um, had uh, cancer, brain cancer when I was growing up. So she was going on a date with my dad and I wanted to make her look like her normal self. So I, she didn't have a lot of makeup and I didn't have a lot of skills, but uh, we managed to get it together. And she looked like her old self, but more importantly, she felt like her old self. So when she looked in the mirror, she felt like her, the best version of her again. And so that's one of the things that I love of my job. It's not just making people beautiful. Obviously, I love doing that, but I love working with people. 
And I like making people look like the best versions of themselves that they didn't even know that they could look like. And so when, you know, with someone with cancer, it's so hard. They're feeling terrible. They don't look well. And, you know, it, it just makes everything worse. But it's amazing how much better someone will feel when they do have a little bit of makeup on and their skin looks even and they just feel it. It's just unbelievable how different people can feel. So I think that's one of the things I enjoy a lot about my, my job. And I love to hear that passion just because it lets me know, too, that for you, it's not even a job. It's something that you wake up and you really just love to do. It's something that can be fun for not only you, but for that person. I'm sure that along this way, along this journey, you've tapped into just so many different things. I've probably taught things to people. People have probably taught things to you. Y'all have learned together. The skills have increased and amassed everything now. So kind of still following this journey. So we, we talked about the wedding. We talked about your mother and really just revitalizing that appearance, that feeling, that mental, everything like that. At what point did you then decide to start taking the business route upside of things? When did Pretty Girl Makeup really get its start? And when did you even, and I'll even kind of, I guess, two part the question, but more so say, when did you say, hey, I want to go into business. I want to make this a brand. Was it some feedback? You got some testimonials. Did you just wake up one day and say, hey, I love this, but I'm also really good at this. So let me let me put some some names behind the brand. What was that like for you? Well, I think it was just, I didn't even know that this was a job and I certainly didn't know what a CEO was, or I never imagined having a makeup. Guy. I couldn't have imagined that my life would be like this or that my career would be this amazing that I get to work with all these extraordinary people. But it just goes to show you that being very determined and hardworking and not saying no to things, I am very open. So when my agents call or any client calls, it's really not about the money, even though it is about the money. It's really about the job. <laughs> like I'll, I do, I've done jobs for, you know, People Magazine and Elle Magazine and, and different celebrities that I get paid so little, but I don't care because I get to work with someone that's so amazing. So I started doing that. I, I you know, worked with different photographers and got um, enough images together to submit to an agent. And I got signed with Ford, New York, um, in San, from San Francisco, New York, San Francisco, Chicago, Miami, um, a long, long time ago. And those were my first agents. So through the years, I've had different agents. And now I'm back with Ford. So I'm, I'm represented by Zenobia, Ford, um, New York, LA, Chicago, um, San Francisco, and uh, Brandy Moore in, San, in the Bay Area. So I'm very blessed to work with those three agents. And they get me amazing jobs. And then also my clients. I work a lot with Fox, uh, Food Network different celebrities. Uh, so it's so much fun. Um, this past weekend, I worked with Cameron, Cameron Brink. She is a Stanford six foot four basketball player, female, blonde, gorgeous, sweetest girl ever. And we did a two day shoot um, down, down in the South Bay. So that was super fun. And so I get to work with these really great people. And it's like kind of like camp, you're with them for two straight days, or, you know, however long you're working together, and you get to know them really, really well. So it's, it's a great job and I love people. I love to travel and I like to be in a new place. I'm a little bit, have a little gypsy blood in me. And so it's, it's a perfect suited job for me. I tell my kids all the time, figure out what you love doing so much that you do it for free and then figure out how to get paid because you know, for example, I worked Friday and Saturday all day and, and Saturday until like, I didn't get home till nine 30 but I didn't care because I had a great time and I was different, you know, with really great people and, and doing what I love doing. And, and when, you know, it feels good. I am really, I feel very confident with what I do and I know I'm good at what I do. So it makes it even better. Cause I'm not, I mean, I'm always nervous. Oh, you know, when you're working with someone new, cause you have to figure out what they want because they're in front of the camera. So if they're not comfortable, even though if I know what I'm doing is, you know, aesthetically correct for the camera, uh, if they're not comfortable, then they're not going to be able to focus on what they need to focus on. So I have to really listen to what they, if they have certain specific things that they like, that I, I make sure it's done. So something that I'm hearing that I want you to confirm for me. So, and I was even looking at the website too, when I saw this. So on top of doing the makeup, you also took behind your mother and you become a photographer as well? No, I'm not a photographer. Okay. No, no, okay. no. I just do hair and makeup. Okay. But I, uh, you're able to coordinate shoots for people in a sense. Though. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I help 
I mean, I'm all part of a team, you know, there's producers, there's lighting people, there's sound people, there's everyone involved. So I, um, it's an ever rolling wheel, a gear moving. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I love the fact that you said that some of the, the best opera, well, you've, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase it for you, but what you basically said was some of the best opportunities come with the least amount of money, the least amount of compensation, but more of that experience. I was actually just reading a post today by um, a gentleman, his name is Lethal Shooter. And pretty much what he does is he trains athletes, celebrities, anyone, anybody just looking to improve their basketball skills, skills shooting, anything like that, he helps you. But he was also just saying how he really had to get his start and how a lot of the things that were coming his way from clients to just um, events to just where he was going and everything like that. Whereas you would hear some big names, you would hear some big places and spaces, the compensation and really everything that you were thinking, it wasn't really like that. But he was able to encompass so much experience, make so many different connections and really just propel himself. So that way, when that opportunity really came, it was for him. So I know what an agent is. I, I, I've talked to, I feel like a, a few of them now across multiple industries, but I want to take a deeper dive into an agent within the makeup industry. What exactly is an agent's responsibilities with, because basically you told us that you were represented by one company, went to another, came back to the same company. When someone represents you, especially as a celebrity makeup artist, what really are their jobs, their roles and responsibilities? Are they securing bookings for you? Are they making sure that clientele and everything and meeting right, traveling, contracts, everything like that? Can you just kind of give us some more insight into what exactly your agent and agency does for you? So my agents, first thing that they always do are they're always updating my portfolio because I'm constantly giving them new images. So they always want to have it updated. So that's part of their job to keep my portfolio updated, um, submitting my work to different projects. And, you know, it's up to the client to, if I'm selected or not. Um, I worked on the Super Bowl this year um, with, let's see, the, I had to get approved by the NFL, Paramount and Nickelodeon. So, I mean, there's a lot of factors. It's just, you know, my agents, all they can do, I'm just grateful they get me in front of people. So, you know, I think my book is pretty strong. And so, I, I, you know, I do well and I'm very grateful for that. But, and then their job is to build the client and to make sure that, you know, we get paid. You know, it's funny. A lot of these, you know, it's usually, I don't get paid typically between 30 and 90 days from a shoot. So you're constantly working because you're constantly needing, you know, money to flow in. So that's why plan B is my company, which is actually plan A because it's a company. But um, so days that I'm not, you know, shooting like today, I'm catching up in my office at home, you know, invoicing clients, um, checking in with my agents, sending notes to my assistant to update ChristinaFlack.com to make sure that the new celebrities in there, the new, the, I also always add, on my client page, besides having my clients that are people, I will put brands, TV networks, different. So people can see the different people that I've worked with, which you've already seen. So there's just, it's so much all the time. And then someone's doing social media and, you know, there's all that debacle that you have to deal with. So it's, it's a lot, but it's always changing and you just have to kind of keep it. I also will check in with different producers I work with. Um, I work with iHeartRadio. So I checked in with Amy today and I'll check in with like different celebrities assistants and just say, Hey, what you have anything? I hope you're having a great summer. Just checking in, seeing if you have anything coming up, if you need me. And so that kind of just makes them think like, oh, that's right. I want people to like, I want my face to be in their head. So I'll check in period. I mean, in my agents, I check in at least once a week. Oh my God, usually it's on Sunday. And I'll just say, hey, happy, you know, happy Sunday. Just checking in. What do we have this week? Yeah, I'm available these days. I have to let them know if I'm not available. So that's kind of part of it. You know, that's one nice thing as a mother. Um, I have one child left at home who is uh, a nationally ranked golfer. And so I have to drive him around sometimes. And so like there's certain days that I have to let them know that I'm going to be a mommy and I'm going to be walking around a golf course watching my six foot two baby play golf. Wow. I like that talent and, and creativity and expertise definitely runs in the family. But no, I can definitely just tell just from my side and what I've been exposed to from coming across you, your press kit, clientele, media, everything like that. Your agents are doing an amazing job. So shout out to them. Shout out to everything. That yes, definitely. Yes, the picture was definitely in my head before we were even able to sit down today. So I oh, would love you. just to see that. But like you said, there is a lot that really had you not given us that 
behind the scenes in a sense, there's so much that's going on. There's so much that we see. Oh, you can't even imagine. And even like during these commercials that we're shooting, you know, we're shooting for product. Um, so we were doing um, a drink and a protein shake and some clothing. And so it seems very monotonous, but we're like in a kitchen, you know, she's opening a refrigerator, taking out the drink. Would we go do that over and over and over again? I mean, it takes a long, it takes so much longer to shoot a commercial, a 30 second commercial than you could even imagine. And then I do my other job is I am the beauty expert on California Live NBC in Los Angeles. And so, yeah, I think I, I think that was another thing I did today. I submitted some ideas for a segment, you know, a segment that we're going to do. So it'll be uh, skincare for, you know, golf, pickleball, tennis, um, and for children, you know, being outside in the weather, warm weather in California. So we have to make sure that kids have, you know, protected their skin as well. So I'm always trying to think of something we did. Um, my, uh, my really dear friend, my TV husband, Berlin Fisher, um, we did a thing, we did a segment on at pride during in June. And so we were all dressed up and we had this great makeup and we did like, you know, different cocktails and mocktails and different things for, for pride. So it's, we're, we did it for Valentine's day. So we're always trying to think of fun kind of crazy things to do um, on air that hopefully people will um, enjoy. And then also it's, I talk a lot about wellness and beauty and beauty from the inside out, because it's not all about the makeup. It's also about, for me, I am obsessed with nutrition. Um, and so it's really important what you put in your body and what you don't put in your body. Water is super important. Green juice, you know, the sunscreen, getting enough rest, exercise, being happy, um, having love in your heart and laughter. It's all those things show on camera. So, you know, I really try to, you know, talk about meditation and, you know, gratitude and all these different things that make a person look like the best versions of themselves from the inside out. It's not all about, it makes my job as a makeup artist easier when someone is, you know, hydrated, eating well, not drinking, not smoking, um, and happy, you know, your eyes, you can pretend to be happy, but your eyes don't lie. And so when someone isn't, um, in a happy place, that's another part of my job. I have to know in literally three seconds if my client wants to talk, if they want to listen, or if they want to tell me. So I just have to figure out what they want. Sometimes they want absolute silence, and sometimes they want to chat. And so I have to figure it out. I, you know, I like let them. Oh, do you need some water? Do you want a cup of tea? Um, I do hand. I do hand massage on them with aromatherapy, and that always gets them in a nice place. Cause it really does make a difference when they go in front of the camera, if they're in a really happy place. So that is another factor that I do. Um, not all makeup artists do, but it's kind of what differentiates me. Perhaps you were reading my mind because I was definitely very interested in the correlation between wellness and makeup. And I, I feel like a lot of times people just, like you said, they really just see makeup for what it is, maybe just covering up something or blending or perfecting right. something or making even right. something feel better. But I also do think you made some great points about how it's, it's much more than that, how things will look different for someone who's not hydrated, who's not sleeping, who's not, right. healthy, who's not right. healthy per se. So I love that you were able to tie the two and two and together. And I love that as a businesswoman, an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, we can put so many titles on it, but I love that you hone in and emphasize that for your clients, because I'm also sure too, that that makes them one more comfortable. It gives them a more mm -hmm. enjoyable experience and it makes them also want to come back and tell other people because you've probably unlocked, like, I'm, I'm going to ask everybody on here, whether you're on Instagram live, whether you're listening, when's the last time you received an aromatherapy hand massage from somebody? <laughs> I've, I've never received that from somebody who offered me a service. So now I'm looking to that now. Now, if you do. Yeah, you're like, I want to, I want to aromatherapy. Now, tell us, right, now, now I want to experience something with Christine and, and sit down and we are, we're going to chat. We're going to chat. So, but no, I, I love that you, you know, you, you've kind of won too. I'm like doing it to myself right now. It's infectious. It's infectious, but I love that you on top of just advocating for you also do your own research and you're always staying up to date with things and your health and your wellness and your I do. everything is so important to you that that'll take you eon. So I feel like this company that's that we're talking about, I'm too busy is the perfect name because I feel like everything yes. that we've talked about since this interview started, I'm, I'm still just trying to figure out, wow, like how, how does she still keep it all together? How is she even sitting down with me here right now? But Oh my God, you're so nice. I, I feel like I don't get enough. I, you know, I've really learned to, uh, 
be a little gentler and kinder on myself. I used to like beat the hell out of myself every day. Like, oh, I didn't get anything. To, I mean, I may have done 2 million things, but I all I focused on were, you know, things I didn't do. So I've really learned to appreciate what I got done today and just be okay with it and be like, hey, good job. You worked really hard. Tomorrow's a new day. We'll get more done. And I'm not sitting obsess on all of that. It's a waste of time to be angry. I mean, you have to be your best cheerleader. You can't be beating yourself up. And so um, I really have learned, I don't call myself names. Um, and I just be, try to be happy with what I have accomplished in a day. And, you know, some days things flow super, like today's been a good day. I've gotten like my desk cleared off. I followed through, I, I got, you know, a lot done. So I feel really good about it. And so it's really important to just be gentle on yourself because you would never treat anyone the way you treat yourself. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And I, right? I'm so glad that you said that because I, one, I call people out for that because it was not something that was easy for me to do and accept as somebody who is a one man band when it comes to the podcast. It was hard when right. there were just days where I just didn't have the motivation or maybe I burned myself out or maybe I did a lot, like you said, but I felt like I did a lot in one area, but I neglected so many different things. And it wasn't until right. I was looking for those home runs that I wasn't appreciating the singles or the walks or for all my baseball analogy people out there, but right. just the small things. So the minute I really started to recognize, wow, how am I speaking to myself? How am I thinking? How am I, how am I putting myself out there to others? And I hone that in here. But also, like you said, for us to be our worst critics, we have to then in that same breath be our biggest cheerleaders. We have to celebrate. Our Absolutely. And life. also no one wants to hear any of that. Like think about the times you're around someone and they're sitting there ripping on themselves. It's like, it's really distasteful. I mean, no one wants to hear that. I mean, no one wants to hear you brag, but you just don't need to like beat yourself, like sit there and go, you're such a dumbass. You're so stupid. Like it's really, it's not productive. So that kind of has helped life just doing that. And, you know, I think it's just, and also giving back. I, you know, I started a uh, educational fund at the Northern Light School in Oakland, California for underprivileged children. It's private school um, that the kids are all there on scholarship. And so my son passed away, my husband passed away. And so I started uh, two educational funds there, the Baby Bow Fund and the Ken Flack Fund. And my kids have all participated um, raising money and, and giving, donating their time. And I feel really, really good about that. My youngest son, Ben, uh, is the twin of Bo who passed away and he raised $60,000 last October. He's raised over $120,000 in the past seven years um, for our, our fund for our, the, at the school. And so many kids have been able to go to school because of that. And I tell him like, Ben, I'm so proud of you. Like that is such a huge deal. And he thinks, mom, I'm playing golf. Like who cares? I'm like, no, you raise so much money. Five kids are going to go to school for a year. And that changes communities and families. And it's like trickling down into, you know, helping making the world a better place. So those are the things that really make me happy. Um, nutrition, obviously, is a big thing to me besides just education. And I helped start uh, the Bo Friedman Outdoor Classroom named after my son in Mill Valley, California at the Ed McGuire School. And it's an outdoor classroom, but there's like, uh, it's a garden and there's fruit trees and there's chickens. And so they, the kids, you know, raise plant seeds and they grow tomatoes and all different vegetables and they harvest them and they do science experiments and they cook and then they have a farmer's market. And so they raise money for the school. So I feel that kids, if they are uh, exposed to healthy, you know, options at a young age, especially when it's not in their house, they're always going to do eat something that's not if your mom tells you to eat a carrot, you know, when you go and pick the carrot and you eat it, you know, so I think that if we can get kids to eat healthier from a young age, they will have healthier eating habits throughout their life. Wow. Well, my condolences and prayers to you and the family as well. But I love I love that as someone who is very very passionate and adamant about education. Um, I grew up pretty much in public school all of my life up until high school. And to really just see the difference in going to a private Catholic all boys high school in comparison to my friends who went to public high schools or charter or everything like right. that. To really want to, I grew up in Philadelphia. So to really just see the Philadelphia public school system, 
to see how so many people are just not a lot of the opportunity, not a lot of the resources, not it could right. depend on your neighborhood where you are, but to want, like you said, these healthy choices, these healthy decision making, these diets, this education and stuff that should be ingrained in us at such a younger age. And maybe it will be more acceptable, be more understood, be more open to it. Whereas we get older and we begin to make decisions for ourselves. But if all we know is one track, it's hard to go. So I, I love to hear that one that your son is doing so because he's doing more than just golf. I, 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 I know. I tell him that every year. I'm like, Ben, you're such a rock star. You're my hero. Like, I just think it's, you know, and he's so poised and he will speak in front of all these. And, you know, it's a celebrity golf tournament that Vida Blue puts on. Um, he was a professional baseball player for the A's. He just passed away. And, um, you know, there's all these different athletes from the Bay Area, from the 49ers and the Giants and the A's and the Warriors and, you know, everyone, the Sharks, uh, they all participate. And so, my son gets up there in front of all of them at the beginning of the tournament of the day and just says that he's grateful to be there. And he's just a kid trying to help other kids. And it. it just makes me so proud. And, you know, I think, I think, you know, it's awful when we lose somebody, but it it's just part of life, but it's our decision and our choice on how we choose to, to what, how we choose to move forward. We can be miserable and just, you know, be grieving and, you know, angry at the world, or you can be grateful for that person that was in your life at all and try and make a difference and try and make things better for others. And so I think that helped all our family uh, moving forward after these experiences was just helping other people because there's always someone with such a harder story than you. I mean, even if the story that I have shared is, is not, the easiest, but there are people out there that don't have families. They don't have parents. They, you know, there's so much yuck out there. So if we can make a difference, I think it, it helps us feel good inside. That's such a message in there. And I, I agree with it wholeheartedly. And it, it just goes to show that even with everything that you do, even with your passions, even with your, your interest in things, it, it, it doesn't really cost much to show love, to spread love, to make a difference, to make an impact in someone else. That's like, so true. Really be that ray of sunshine. Sometimes just saying hello to somebody could really flip their day. Completely. A smile. You. Or, you know, if you don't have a smile on, you know, someone, th it's so funny. We all take things so personally. So, you know, we walk by someone and they don't smile or whatever. They think it's doing something to them. You know, we're not sometimes a person is not even so in their own head. They don't even see what's going on that they even see the other person. And, but that could ruin someone's day. So it's just easier if you walk by someone smile like and honestly, if you put a smile on your face, you just automatically feel better, even if you don't really feel it. But you will feel better. I mean, sometimes you just have to believe me. I've had to fake it until I was. And so. It, it, you know, even when you get on a phone call, smile before you pick up the phone or, you know, on if you're going to see a friend, it just it makes a difference. No one wants to be around a bunch of negativity and toxicity. No one wants it. So, you know, if you wonder why things are happening to you, they're not really sometimes they're happening for you. And so just know some. I, I don't think there's failures in life. The only failure to me is not trying mm -hmm. or doing or setting a goal. I don't even like saying trying because it gives you wiggle room to get out. But I think if you set a goal and you know, you're determined, you will get to it. But I think it's just, it's really important to don't, don't think about the failure. Think about you know, the, the journey, the road, and there's going to be bumps because there always are. And just know sometimes it's the universe wanting you to pivot or turn left or turn right. It doesn't mean it's a failure. It's a lesson. And so when I learned that, I learned that from uh, Tyler Florence, my client, he's a celebrity chef. And, and he says that he goes, there's no failures. You're doing it. It's just, it's, you know, it's a journey and it's just taking time. So just know that maybe this is actually, sometimes things have happened. I thought at the time to me, but they were happening for me, but I didn't realize it. So if you know that, and another thing I learned this year was really interesting was getting comfortable being uncomfortable because I got to tell you, I'm a makeup artist for a reason. I'm not an actress. I'm not a singer. I like being behind this camera. And I didn't, you know, when I was given the opportunity to go on NBC as a beauty expert and talk, you know, speak about makeup and wellness and all these other things that 
or my passions. I was like, oh no, I can't do that. Oh, I'm scared. Like, oh, and my friend Berlin was like, girl, get your ass on there. You're going to do it and you're going to be uncomfortable. But the it's so amazing how much more confident I feel um, speaking in public now than I did before. I was so uncomfortable and so nervous, but now I realize that these moments where I'm uncomfortable are actually something great's going to happen. So instead of thinking like something bad's happening because it's, you know, change or whatever, I think, ah, something really great's going to happen. So it, it's been great for me to be able to be on NBC. I'm on like two to four times a month and I'm so honored and grateful and um, that I'm given this opportunity. Love it, man. You, uh, you're very impressive as you, as you just continue to kind of, as we move along through this interview, I'm just thoroughly amazed, but you're really saying things that for me, they, they hit at different points in my journey, whether it be just a life journey, an entrepreneurial journey, family journey, spiritual, everything of the sort. But to hear these lessons and to hear someone be able to reflect on them and how they propelled you in your career, but just how they help you in life. It's really amazing to me. But I also still know that you do a lot. You're a woman of many hats. You're a philanthropist, an entrepreneur, everything of the sort. So I'm too busy. I feel like the name speaks for itself. I feel like we can kind of get the conversation from it. So, it is. Everyone feels they're too busy. Absolutely. Every time I say the name of my new company, everyone's like, oh my God, that's so great. Yeah. Like, as soon as you said it, I was, I was nodding my head at the beginning too. So. And it's men and women. Everyone feels like they're too busy. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Now, with everything that you have going on, why did... Christina decide to add more to her plate and start another company. And then I guess so that we don't make any assumptions here, what can the people expect with I'm Too Busy? What will this company entail? What will it focus on? Who will it really target? I think I wanted to start because I meet so many people and it's always the same story that I hear from women that are going to department stores and they come and tell me they have all this makeup. They don't know how to use it. Uh, they don't know. It, it doesn't suit their lifestyle, but they were sold by a salesperson. They weren't sold by a makeup artist. So I just thought, you know, you don't need like I've had women come to me for a consultation, like a makeup lesson, and they will come here with bags and bags of makeup. And I'm like, okay, you don't need all that. You need a, you know, good skincare, obviously. You need a concealer, some something for the brows, eyeshadow, eyeliner, mascara, something for the cheeks and the lips, the end. That's it. You don't need all this stuff. Because if you think about it, when you look in ads on TV or ads in magazines that kind of don't really exist anymore, but they used to, you know, magazines uh, for ads, you don't see all this crazy entertaining makeup that you see on TikTok and Instagram. I mean, it's fun and it's entertaining, but it's not like real life with a makeup artist like I do on set. I have to have, it can't be a distraction. So if I work with a Gucci or a Louis Vuitton, they will send me incredibly detailed instructions with photographs, how they want the makeup. It is so minimal. It looks like nothing because the they don't want the model's face to be like, look, it, they're just basically a hanger. They want the clothes to be the point of, of contact, you know, that they're look, they're focused on, not the face. They definitely don't want it to be a distraction. So it's, you know, I just thought like I can do, and, and then this friend of mine uh, said, Hey, I've got that. We were talking about doing a company together. And then he said, well, I've got this, I have this name trademarked and he, and he told me the name and I'm like, Oh, hell yeah. Like I'll buy that. So I, it's trademarked and I bought it. So it's just taking so long and it's a little frustrating, but it'll get done. One of these. It's absolutely. It's all a part of the journey. The fact that you even yeah. spoke it now here, you've spoken it before. It'll, it'll happen. We've it's. Oh, my, it's happening. Oh, for yes. sure. In my four years it's here, it's been so beautiful just to speak to so many people since 2019 and to see things happen, to see things that they talked about, to see things that even we spoke about that may have been an idea once that may they have been moving their feet a little slow on that maybe just it wasn't time. But when it happens, it happens. We talk about it. Yeah. and It's beautiful. So I love that. And I feel like this really came across your table in exactly the way that it should. The fact that a friend of yours already had a trademark. It was it was right. your alley. But I love too what you just touched on about simple simplicity, how less is more sometimes. How sometimes right. you said the bad. I even get overwhelmed sometimes walking into like woman, any woman, whether it be my sister, whether it be friends, 
even sometimes the the stores it's, it's so much like it's a lot it's, it's so, so much, much. It's, it's so much. overwhelming and then i also feel like how is anyone gonna how is a brand how are you going to get brand loyalty from your customers if you're constantly selling them a bunch of stuff they don't need it doesn't fit in with their lifestyle uh, you know an executive a woman that's an executive doesn't need to have all this contouring and highlighter and all that stuff it's distracting she can't go into a boardroom or a court you know with all this makeup on it's just got to be clean and simple um and i also feel like when you look feel like the best ver look like the best version of you you feel like the best version of you so you're not distracted so you can go on a zoom or go into a meeting and feel confident and then do what you need to do which is your job not be distracted like oh god i've got like circles under my eyes and there's like a zit and ugh. yeah i mean i i we all think that right but I can hide a lot. I hire myself every day. I have to get in front of a camera. I'm like, Doo. she looks perfect, y'all. If you can't see, but that's you're, you're right. And I feel like you know sometimes it really takes just just doing. It. I feel like take step, take a step back from everyone's. Everyone is visual. So when people say, "Oh, you're superficial because you're a makeup artist," or that you know you have makeup on, I'm like, look, I want to be the best version of me every day. Which means I woke up at six today. I was at Pilates at seven, 15. I had the green juice. I had the, I did everything I can to feel really good. Why wouldn't I try to look like my best? It's disrespectful to me to go into a meeting with you. If I look like a haggard mess and how on earth am I going to go and talk about beauty and wellness when I look like a mess? Like it, I, I can't do my, like, honestly, who is going to listen to me if they think like, wow, she, and I'm not thinking I'm the most beautiful human alive. I'm just saying I look like the best that I can look, or I'm trying to. And, you know, my, because I'm not distracted by like feeling like I looked like an hour ago when I was just in here working. Um, I'm like, oh, it's two o'clock. I better get in there and paint myself. Um, you know, it's, I can, I can, feel comfortable and, and happy and good to, to do, you know, what you and I need to do. And so I think it's, I think it's important to like, to give our, put our best foot forward in how we look, how we feel and how we present ourselves to the world. I just do like, I don't think there's anything superficial about it. I'm not going to argue with you because I can't argue with you because I agree a hundred percent. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with you a hundred percent. Like you said, it would almost be doing yourself a disservice. Now, you, we spoke about really early on in your journey, how you really kind of came to be, how sometimes it just started off as you just being, and it was a playful nature. It was you just experimenting with friends and everything. Your mother just being a, a creative herself really kind of embarked you on that path. Would you say there was a particular like moment where you just were, became very fond of the celebrity makeup side of things. Did you always kind of envision wanting to really work with big names, big clients, everything? Oh, for sure. Are you kidding? I love my celebrities. They're hilarious. I love them. I mean, it's not just that. I like being around people that are successful and hardworking. Every one of these people, and I don't just work with like celebrity movie star celebrities or, uh, or you know, I work with athletes. I have a lot of athletes. I have a lot of chefs. I have a lot of tech CEOs. Um, that I work with, they all have a fantastic story, every one of them. And so it's super fun that I'm able to have them for an hour or a day. I had, you know, Condoleezza Rice, I was down with her at Stanford for Time Magazine, Hillary Swank, Isaiah Washington, I mean, all Tyler Florence, Bobby Flay, all these amazing people um, that I am so privileged to work with and um, that I get to chat with and get to know. And everyone, in the world, whether it be a bride or a model or any of these really cool people I work with, everyone has something to teach you. And it'll be the most random thing. I have the CFO of Google teach me to, blow, like I am not a hairstylist, okay? I am a makeup artist that does hair, okay? Very different. I didn't go to beauty school, I don't cut color, I don't know how to do anything, okay? I can fake it really well. So she was telling me, she goes, girl, Get that brush and pull that hair down. I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to hurt you. Just like pull it, straighten it. I'm like, wow, CFO of Google. 
I love that. You've worked with um you've worked with one of my favorite chefs too. I absolutely love Bobby Flay. Between Iron Chef and Oh, he's B- lovely. Yeah, between yes. Iron Chef and B Bobby Flay, my TV really doesn't alter the sound. So I'm gonna have to um football season is coming though, so it will see a little less view time in my household. But yeah, there's one of a kind. But I love what yeah. you said about that, about how sometimes it's the like minded. It's that who you surround yourself with. It's with who you're around, your your atmosphere, your circle, just those people that even like you said, on top of learning, it's motivation. It's seeing people that, oh, we're in two totally different industries, but wow, we're having an amazing time right now. You taught me something. I taught you something. We're able to come together. We're able to network. We're able to connect probably maybe even on life, on family, interests, passions, hobbies, you name it. Everything. Definitely. Okay. But I know now- so I'll tell you a funny Bobby Flay story since he's your favorite. Well, come on. I need it. Okay. So I, I had been told he could be a little bit prickly and I've had a million children, so- and I was married to a professional athlete, so I can deal with a lot, okay? So I'm like, oh, how bad can he be? So anyway, I get there. He he opens the door. Um, he couldn't have been nicer. He's like, do you want a cup of tea? And I said, oh, yes, I would love a cup of tea. He made me a cup of tea. And he was telling me about his night. He'd gone to a dinner and had, you know, and then he, he goes, hey, is your last name Flack? And I said, yeah. He goes, are you married to Ken Flack? And I said, yeah. He goes, how the fuck did you get that guy to marry you? And I'm like, how did I get him to be him to get marry me? Are you kidding? I, I laughed so hard. So I went home that night. I told my husband this story. He laughed. He told everyone he found anyone he saw. He goes, well, "You want to hear a funny story?" Bobby Flay wants me, you know, to know how I, you know, I died. So he's lovely. And then I just did a shoot with uh, Guy Fieri and Sammy Hagar for uh, Santos Tequila, which is super fun, and um, they're awesome. So. Yeah. I love this. There's all kinds of awesome people in the world. Well, They're all- hey, you're, you're giving me an inside look here and I, I'm loving what I'm hearing. Now, I feel like we can go on and on from your, your Neiman Marcuses to your Bloomingdale's to your Tesla's to your Visa, Paramount, NFL, Nickelodeon, Bobby Flay, Hillary Swank. I'm pretty sure I saw Megan Rapino on there. I saw a yes. few of different people. But I know for you, Christina, she's not settling. She's in the mode of always just wanting to get better, excel and elevate. So for- People coming across you for the first time, people learning more about pretty girl makeup. What can they expect? What 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 does the future hold for you? Are there and without disclosing too much, because while we love to reveal things on here, we don't like to spoil or give away anything that's not time yet. But can the people kind of get some insight into maybe are you thinking about maybe new products, new services, going into different industries, working with different people? Is there anything that as the year kind of continues to progress that they can be on the lookout for? From pretty girl makeup from so i am doing 10 podcast interviews for my own podcast which i've never done before um like i'm gonna have a show in new york um in september we're starting it's gonna be once a week i'm doing that uh continue doing nbc california live um let's see what else i do have new products coming with with i'm too busy um, i'm working with a chemist to do a three uh step skincare because you know how many people buy nineteen thousand things and, and they don't do they don't use them. So I want it to be three steps that you actually will use. Um, what else do I? Have? I write. I have an article coming out in Us Magazine, Women's Fitness Magazine. Uh, I wrote another article. Let's see. You know, there's no stopping. I, I, you know, I want to work with everybody. I would like to be. I would like to do magazine covers of Vogue. Um, I want to do a Target ad. I think those ads are so cool. Um, I don't know. I'm just, uh, you know what? I am open to whatever. Ooh, okay. Bring it. I'll That's just it. Bring it. Okay. Universe, oh, bring it. A, oh, you just, my favorite thing on the podcast are call to action. So look, y'all, she's saying that give her something, make her challenge her. Pick her brain. Yes. Add something to the resume. Now, I don't want to diminish, I don't want to take away from anything that you've done across such an illustrious career. But I do like to take deep dives, as you, if you can't tell. But what would you say, looking back on your career, looking back on everything that we have amassed to date, and even when this interview probably drops, there'll even be more. So maybe we'll even go back and do a follow-up and everything. What yeah, happened that sure. in your mind, when you think about Pretty Girl Makeup, Christina Flack, I'm Too Busy, what is just a memorable moment? What is just something that you'll never forget about this journey? What is just something that for you, it really means the world to you? It really touches your heart every time that you think about it, have to talk about it, recall it, anything like that? Well, I I think, you know, seeing Miley Cyrus in InStyle Magazine had 
a lip gloss next to her bed. That was pretty cool. But just seeing like I've gone through um, airports traveling for work or and I'll see a magazine and then there's my client. I had Marita, Rita Moreno. I did her makeup. It was in People magazine. And then Tyler is in magazine. So seeing that is always like a, such a thrill. Um, working with new celebrities on new projects, working with um, Guy and Tyler and, and um, Sammy, excuse me, um, on the Santos ad. Like that was a big deal. I did, uh, I worked with the CEO of, President and CEO of Visa North America, um, Kimberly Johnson, lovely. And I'm also, I did another thing I did that I didn't expect to do. I am um, a producer on a movie called uh, Sensitive Men Rising. It's a documentary. So I, um, I did that. It's just, it's coming up. So, I mean, there's all these things that pop up today. I, I did an introduction with um, one of my friends that has this, the guy that I bought. Uh, I'm too busy from, um, he's looking for investors. So a friend of mine in New York, I put a call together. I did a zoom today with those guys. So I'm doing business stuff. So, I mean, I don't, I don't, there's nothing. It's always changing and evolving. And I know a lot of people, so I can connect people and I'm happy to do that. And sometimes, you know, there's always benefits of, of doing that. And it's not always monetarily, but it's sometimes people will refer me to another client. I, I love that there's, I, I wanted to mention something. So do you know who JB Smooth is? Absolutely. Okay. I love that guy. Okay. I love him. JB Smooth, I love you. So I listened to this interview with him with Howard Stern and, you know, he's done, he's been in, you know, Hollywood forever doing all kinds of different things. And it totally resonated with me because he goes, what they, he said, why do you think he works? You work so much. He goes, because I'm not a pain in the ass and I'm nice and I show up on time. And that's me. I'm not a pain in the ass. I do my job. But what, another thing he said, he goes, you know, I'm nice to everybody. And it's like I'm planting seeds. And so all those people that I sat with, like, you know, the interns at lunch, like I'd sit with in chat. Now they're running studios. They're doing all this stuff. So I get referred jobs from other people that have that worked with me in the past. So this weekend when I worked with um, Cameron Brink, that was a photographer friend of mine, Alexis, that he and I have done, you know, so many shoots together. And he, I'm so grateful that he asked me to do that. We did Wine Spectator that's coming out. We did like, I don't know, four, 20 different people in Wine Spectator. It's coming out in October. Um, but I am so grateful that like we do all these athletes together. I love it. We've done, um, Jalen Brown, he's with Boston Celtics. We did that right before he got signed. We did a documentary with a boxer in LA. Uh, we have had Cameron. We did a bunch of ballerinas that are incredible athletes. So, you know, I'm really grateful for all the people that I work with, but that want to work with me again, or that refer me to somebody else. I'm really grateful. But, um, you know, you get that you make your luck. Okay. You're not lucky. It's called hard work. It's there's some quote, I think it is like, it's amazing how lucky I got after working really hard. It's not, it's, it's really not, you're not lucky. It's just hard work pays off. That's just it. If you're like, there's people out there that are makeup artists that will just, you know, show up late, kind of do a half-assed job, be on their phones, not ch like I jump in, in front of the camera a lot, probably more than these photographers really like. Cause I'm like, hold on hair's out of thing. There's something there, but then they're happy because in post production, they're not having to do a bunch of touch up. Cause I already made sure everything was done. I feel like I, at the beginning of the interview, I knew that I was getting on here with a woman by the name of Christina Flack um, on behalf of pretty girl makeup. But I feel like now I really don't know who I'm talking to. Like, I feel like you are just everywhere. You do a little bit of everything, but I love it because it really just, it's your life. It's not anything that's forced. It's not anything that you're just out there just trying to do. It, it just, it one, I feel like a lot of the blessings, a lot of what happens to you, it just comes your way. But two, undeniable, the, the work ethic, the passion behind it, the experience that you get, the personable, the genuine, the authentic energy that you get. I can see why I could scroll this list and all these people want to work with you. And that's and like I said, who's to only say what the end of the year will look like, what next year will look yeah, like? Yeah, I, I don't know. And it's, just, it's true. Like I did. So a friend of mine um, was my kid's piano teacher. 
Greg Johnson. He was doing this documentary and he asked me if I would do the makeup for it. And they had no budget to hire me because, and I just said, I'll, I'll do it for free. Like, it's fine. I'll just, I'm, I'm not working that day. I'll do it for free. So I did it. And then they were looking for a voice for the film. And they asked me to like contribute some, like I had some ideas and then I'm friends with Peter Coyote. He's a, you know, very well-known um, actor with an amazing voice. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm friends with Peter Coyote. I just saw him at this event um, for the Northern Lights School. And he became the voice. So I connected him. So I brought him on to be the voice of the film. So then I got a producer credit. But that was never my intention. I, I was just like doing makeup for free and connecting my friend to another friend. I it was never, I wasn't like, oh, well, what, what am I going to get out of it? What am I, I, I don't look at things that way. I help people because it's the right thing to do and it's fun to connect, but I don't expect anything when I do it. And if something great happens, wow, that's great. But if not, it's great too. But it is, you know, it is what it is type mentality. I love that a lot. Now, obviously we said the name a lot. We said both names, uh, Pretty Girl Makeup, I'm Too Busy. But before we really get into where the people can find you, where they can go through all of your services, the testimonials, the clients, the products, services, everything like that. Do you feel like there's anything that we have not touched on today that you want to leave for the people, whether it be any message for other makeup artists, business owners, entrepreneurs, people just navigating through this thing that we call life? Do you feel like there's anything that throughout this interview, you know, we may have shed light on, but didn't really dive into or anything that you even want to leave the people who will be coming across this episode in some capacity with? I just think, you know, life is short. Live every day to the fullest and be happy. And, you know, have love in your heart and laughter and figure out what you love doing so much. You know, if you don't like something in your life, change it. And, you know, don't make excuses. Stop complaining. Just make one slight change every, you know, if you could be 1% better every day, how great would you be at the end of the year? Right? 1%. And, you know, just know not worrying about failing. Failing is just laying in there in that complacent state, not doing anything. You know, that's the failure. And just know there's going to be a bump. It just means turn right, turn left. And sometimes it's happening for you. You know, sometimes it's like, wow, that didn't happen to me. That happened for me. Thank God that happened. One of and the just be like happy. Really good, good God. Be flipping happy. I wish you could. I wish I could just plaster that. Somewhere. Just be happy. Don't worry. Be happy, man. I think while that's so, to some of me, be cliche, it's a way of life. And it's something that we have not mastered yet. Otherwise, we wouldn't have to keep saying it over. Over. over and over. I mean, it's amazing. And I think with, you know, what we spoke about earlier about being comfortable, being uncomfortable, there are so many, like now I know that when I'm uncomfortable and something like, Oh God, ooh, I'm scared. I just know something great's going to happen because I'm really uncomfortable. And this feels really odd, like a situation um, or a business thing, like, Oh, I'm not sure, but just do it. Like sometimes I feel like with myself, I put something off like, oh, I'll do it later. I'll, you know, I, I procrastinate. I need to just do it. And then it's done. And it's like, oh, God, I don't have to think about it anymore. I hate that thing that it's like, oh, I've got to go do that. I've got to go do it. Okay, just do it and be done with it. I don't want to think about it. That forever undaunting task. No, I'm with you. Right? I'm with you 110%. You haven't said, you haven't really said too much today that I'm, I'm going to disagree with. So I, I think we're on the right track, the right place for sure. You're the best. I, I had such a good time today. Thank you. you. No, thank you. Like I said, thank you to everything that you're doing. Thank you for the insight that you shed, to the light that you shed on everything today. And thank I, you. you know, thank you for the call to actions that you gave to my audience and just the resource that you're going to be just the same. Now, for everyone out there, like I said, your side, my side, in between, new, everything of the sort. Where can people find you? Where can people check out the products? Where can people keep track of the journey, see what you've already done, see what you're doing, and then see what's to come? What are the best places to reach out to you and find you? Okay, so you can go to christinaflack.com, uh, prettygirlmakeup.com, and soon to be I'm too busy.com. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Um, on Instagram, Christina Flack Makeup and Pretty Girl Makeup. It's P R E T T Y G I R L M K U P. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, or X now. I guess it's called X. Um, yeah. Check us out. And then California Live, you know? Okay. Go to California Live NBC. Check her out on NBC, NBC y'all. And everything is on ChristinaFlack.com. All of the segments and videos that we do um, for makeup and tutorials and stuff are there. And the art magazine articles as well. 
Gotcha. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in the bio and everything like that, y'all. But Flack is spelled F L A C H. Maybe C H. Yes. K, but it's F L A C H. We like to be politically correct here. So yes. No. Christina, thank you so much. Like I said, I'm definitely excited. Thank you. To follow along the journey. I'm excited to see I'm Too Busy get his debut, get his start, and really be able thank to help you. so many different people. But I, I love what you do. Like I said, from working with one of my favorite chefs to just so much of what you've done really just out of genuine love, authentic energy, just being Christina, just really being who you are. And even despite everything that life has thrown at you, recognizing and not taking things personal, recognizing that some things are really happening for you, even when you couldn't make sense of it in the moment, even when you may not be able to make sense of it to this day, you continue to show up every day and be authentically and unapologetically you. And I absolutely love that. So to everybody who you've brought my way, I thank y'all. I love y'all. To everybody who's stuck with me throughout this journey, I thank you. I love you. To everybody coming along for the first time, obviously I love y'all too. Just stick with us, just stay with us. We did sit down with Christina Flack today of Pretty Girl Makeup, and this has been another episode of the Down to Business Podcast here with Tamar Turner.